Uh, from Jared Aviat. The subject is the woman of NXT 2.0. Hi there, K1 Hun. Hope you guys are doing well. K Dog. On the Cauli- oh, congratulations, K Dog, on the Cauliflower Alley Club Award. Much deserved to you. Pioneer of Lucha Libre. When are you coming in for that, by the way? I don't know. The day before, the day of. I haven't decided yet. But does Dominic can, live here yet, or does he still live in San Diego? I, hopefully, I can see your bum ass. Okay, um, well, here. Let's do this. Let's, let's right. plan. Try and get us and uh, Ray... And if Dominic's is Dominic here yet? I don't he's know not he's, in he, Vegas yet. No, but okay, he might well, be there we'll, for that. That he might be we, there for that. Me, you, and Ray need to go eat some all you can eat Korean barbecue. So, oh, that would be yeah, tremendous. It's the, it's the weekend of September 26th through the 28th. Yeah. Oh, is it really? Mm-hmm. No, we got to do it on a day that football is not playing. So, <laughs> uh, just wanted to ask about the women in NXT. There's several new faces in NXT, like Santino's daughter, Sophia Cromwell, Kiana James, etc. These are all attractive women with big personalities and characters as opposed to NXT women in the past like Tegan Knox or Ember Moon who are more well known for their in-wing work and being indie darlings. I feel there's been a huge shift in the type of woman being featured in NXT. My question for the crew is, do you see this as a return in WWE to the diva era where the emphasis was on looks and character? And do you guys see WWE hiring less and less women who have wrestled for many years but don't have much of a character? Thanks very much. Best, Jared. Yeah, of course. Did they want people? Bro, they're, they're concentrating right now it's like they're seeing the the you know, the the negative press that they're getting over their ratings because they're getting so much money from the networks for TV rights and they're not delivering like they promised. And I think they're thinking we got to get numbers back up. But one of the easiest ways to get numbers back up is to start you know extenuating the sexuality of the hot women on our roster and featuring them more because you don't really. It's been shown the target demographic for professional wrestling. We usually not like the, the the women do well because they're hot women. You're not changing the channel when they're on. So I can absolutely see that, especially this Nikita Lyons girl who's like, yeah, like she checks all the boxes. She's yeah. kind of like got the pog look, and you know she's got the the big bun. She does you know does a lot of TikTok sexy dancing, and she can she's not bad in the ring too. You know she's a little green, but it's like you know that they don't you know I, I I don't think they really care anymore. It's like they, they've got enough of women that are like serviceable enough that like that look good that they can just throw them in there and work with the good ones, you know. Yeah, so Tiffany, I don't know. St- Tiffany Stratton's another one that's like a looker and does all the I, char- I read character too, Conan, videos get, and everything. Yeah. Get a load of this. There's seven second generation women in their in their system. Hmm. Like seven daughters of professional wrestlers are in the WWE system, whether they're on TV now or or they're in NXT. That's that's a big number. You know, that's just the women. So <clears throat> um uh I saw Santino's daughter. She's very, very pretty. Mm -hmm. And I think that WWE, you know, they'd rather have hot looking girls than girls that can wrestle because you get a bigger audience. You know what I'm saying? You can, most guys want to see a hot girl, not a girl that can wrestle. That's that's like a niche market. Mm -hmm. And so they're going more in that, in that direction. Um, And, and it's, you know, this is a business, bro. And and have you ever wondered why most singers are usually good looking? That isn't by chance, you know, because they sell better, you know. So, I mean, it's the same thing in wrestling. You want your people to be good looking. That's what sells, you know. And so um, that I can I can see them going in that direction 100%. And Jeremy told me there's some other hot girls that haven't even shown up on TV yet. Mm, really? He says that, that yeah. Yeah, that's a, they they <laughs> they get a farm system. They know they know what they're doing. Like you yeah. know, so bro, I had to do the same thing. All my girls, they could all wrestle, but uh, you know, they weren't the most attractive looking women, right? Right. And they had didn't have the best bodies. And right now, you can see all of them have better bodies than before, better looking than before. They're not on the same scale as the United States because they don't have the same nutrition and they don't make the same money and they don't have the same resources. But once, if we do break into the United States and they start getting, you know, nutritionists and right. start learning how to do, we're going to have some banging girls, you know? Yeah. Next is from Jose Perez. Subject is question. And let me, and let me, and let me tell you, there's a huge difference in social media. Our girls get way way more views than our guys. Mm. Really? Interesting. Yes. Because they're Texas, hot. Yeah. Um, Nikita Lyons and Mandy Rose uh, are two key people they're looking to build around, especially Nikita. Uh, social media numbers around them are ridiculous. Um, overall, um, they only fall behind Becky Lynch, Stasha, Ronda, and Charlotte. Both of them are above uh, Bianca Belair. 
um, and they're only NXT talent, right? so they're not even getting that push uh, on, on that level. Um, they're both going to be heavily protected now from this point forward, um, all the way until they get on the main roster. So this over-reliance on the horsewomen will die down, and it'll be these two girls that they'll they'll start pushing. But obviously, the plan for WrestleMania 39 is to do Ronda and Becky. So that's what you're going to push until that point. But then you're going to start integrating these two people, and they're going to be big stars if they continue to pull these numbers in. Cool. All right. Sounds good. Um, where can we find you at, Bailey? Yeah. So um, my my wrestling Twitter is at k100 and former. Uh, my betting Twitter is at lockbetting.com. So it's lockbetting.com without the dot. And lockbetting.com is my website. Um, sign up now uh, because too late in the month it becomes pointless. There's loads of stuff going on. Uh, Canelo's fighting tomorrow. UFC card tomorrow. Uh, end of the soccer season, domestic leagues all finishing, uh, Champions League, Europa League, Europa Conference League, we're making money. There's, 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 so, much, there's so much action. Like yeah, early the like playoffs. We, we live in the States. Playoffs. Yeah, we live in the States. You know, you've got action at you know, 7, 10 o'clock in the morning, noon in the afternoon, everything, and then you take a break and everything and all that. They come back later on at night. You've got the baseball players and the hockey or the basketball players, hockey players, baseball. There's so much action right now. It's a great time to sign up for, uh, for LockBetting.com. Yeah. So get your uh, get your bets in a uh, place where um, uh, Billy been making money for our boy Di and Joe's gonna lay down some uh, 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 a bet this week on the boxing match. And, not, uh, he's not he's not betting on what I think is gonna happen. Just right. let me just parable. Yeah. So, but boy, he's gonna be <laughs> he's gonna, he's better than the other guy, so we'll be happy when he loses. Right. right. So, can, <laughs> so. so um, I uh, just want to say once again, thank you for coming in here for all the hot news from London, Billy. Boom. Cool. Peace out, brother. Yo, what up? This is Conan, and I host Keeping It 100, my co-host, Disco Inferno, unfortunately. Well, I'd say you're my co-host. Listen, every Thursday here on Spreaker, we talk pro wrestling, sports, movies, music, TV, pop culture, and some politics. It's everything the rest of the pro wrestling podcasts are not. Tune in to hear myself, the superior one, educate and inform. Tune in to hear me bury Disco. That's very disrespectful. Join us every Thursday on Spreaker and keep it 100. Boom!